Hey guys, welcome to Crazy Burger. In this video, we're going to be looking at all arcade carts currently available on Avercade on the Avercade Alpha. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay guys, we're going to be looking at every Evercade Arcade Collection, that's Collection 1 to 10. There are a few more Evercade Arcade Collections coming out at the end of November and December, and we will cover them at the time, that's uh, to a Plan 2 and 3 and Data East Collection 2. But first off, we're going to start at the very beginning, I'll give you my thoughts on some of the games, I'll highlight some of the good ones, um, and I'll highlight any issues, that type of thing, and is the car actually worth buying for your Alpha? First, we're going to start off with Technos Arcade 1. Okay guys, let's get started. This is Technos Arcade 1. It comes complete with 8 games. Now there's a few games here that are in the vertical aspect ratio, like Battle Lane Volume 5. That probably is not the, the ideal scenario for this screen, but it's still, they still seem to work quite uh, okay. Um, now there's Double Dragon 3, Double Dragon 2 on here as well. Um, the arcade versions, and there's Mysterious Stones and the Combatrise. Now some of these games work really well. Some of them don't. Now interestingly, Battle Lane Volume 5, um, that is a very, very tough game. But I actually found that the controls were a lot better um, utilising a joystick rather than uh, playing on a D-pad uh, on the EXP or on the VS for example. Obviously it's arcade games, you press the select button to insert a coin and press the start button to get started. Now, brutal, brutal game, no doubt about it, and it is quite hard to see the enemy firepower, but I felt that the movement uh, with the joystick was so much better than the D-pad, um, but it still is a brutally, brutally tough game. Now, sadly, stuff like Blockout probably didn't play quite as well as it did on the Super Pocket. It just felt so much better on there. It felt like it was a really good fit. I felt that like the movement was probably just a little bit oversensitive at times. As you can see here, as I'm trying to move um, the, the sort of blocks and put them into place. Um, and it just, it was hard to get completely accurate because I felt it was just a little bit oversensitive. So hopefully something can be sorted about that. I just felt... It's just not as playable, it actually works better on a D-pad, uh, even on the Super Pocket, this game is fantastic on the Pocket. Now, unfortunately for me, I thought Double Dragon, you would think it would be really good. Double Dragon 3 is absolutely awful, <laughs> I really think it, it's probably worse uh, on here than it is on the EXP handheld. I know that it sounds really good, but yeah, it's really not the best beat em up at all. Now if you like this game, I apologise. I have to say, Double Dragon 2 does fare a lot better. Mania Challenge is actually quite a lot of fun on the joystick as well, but some of the games that don't work well are probably stuff like Minky Monkey and Mysterious Stones. They don't really perform that great at all. Uh, Mysterious Stones, I'll give you an example, I just felt it just didn't feel very good on the joystick. It felt, felt to me like the character got stuck a few times when I was playing it. Uh, and it I don't think it's a great game anyway, but it, it definitely felt a lot tougher and less fun to play than it might have been on in a handheld. Like for me, the, the joystick doesn't work great. This is like an eight-way uh, joystick, whereas I think the character is looking for like a four-way uh, joystick. It just doesn't work. There's something not right with the controls. It just doesn't feel very natural, and it feels as if you actually get stuck. You probably have to stop and move back. You can't really go like quick and move um, very quickly with the joystick. If you stop and then try to move, that's probably a little bit better. But there was times when it gets a little bit ferocious that I definitely got stuck with the character. It just doesn't work that well on this joystick for me. However, one game that does work fantastically well is The Combo Tribes. And this is one of those games you can actually play as three player. By going into the three dots, you can play it in three player if you really want to on your Evercade Alpha. Um, but this game, Great stuff. Probably the best game on the collection for me and it's fantastic stuff. It might be the only reason, to be honest, to buy this Technos collection. Bright, colourful uh, graphics, massive sprites, excellent. What's not to love? And it is a, an absolute blast to play. And I have to say it controls amazingly well on the Alpha. Definitely one of those uh, games to buy an Alpha for. Oh, my God. 
No doubt if you're a Double Dragon uh, fan, you will probably want to buy this collection for this. And Double Dragon 2 is definitely probably the better game uh, out of this and Double Dragon 3. It's just a pity we don't have the original Double Dragon, because that's probably the best game uh, of the series. Uh, but if you want to play that, I'm afraid you're going to have to get a Super Pocket instead. This probably does play a little bit better on the Alpha than it does on some other devices. Like I, did, I really didn't get into this at all on the EXP, um, but on the, the Alpha it definitely has a lot better. I feel like that the move the movement is a lot more smoother, uh, and using the joystick definitely gives you a lot more fluid feel to the characters. Okay guys, to summarise, I Technos Arcade 1 probably isn't the greatest overall, it was the first collection, arcade collection released. I'd probably only really buy it for Combo Tribes, it is absolutely brilliant, but overall that's maybe what, 8 games and only one of them I would recommend for it. Probably isn't a great return at all, and in fact this is a legacy cart, meaning it's no longer manufactured by Blaze. Um, so you'd probably have to pay through the odds on sites like eBay if you wanted this into your collection. Now, interesting, they've also added the eject cart function onto the Alpha as well. I mean, don't maybe it's probably a, a good practice to actually use that by pressing the select button and then press A to actually say that you want to eject the cart. Then it's it's safe to actually take the cart out rather than maybe taking the cart out mid-game, mid-save or something so that it doesn't actually get corrupted. Okay, guys, next up is Data East Arcade 1. This is collection number two and it comes complete with 10 games. Some really good stuff, you'll get Bad Dudes, which is fantastic. A few of the games that are probably not amazing, Breakthrough, Burger Time, you got Chain Reaction, a puzzle style game. Um, Darwin, uh, 4078, which isn't that great, but they've got the fantastic Gate of Doom, Dark Seal, and also its sequel, which is Wizard Fire, which are fantastic sort of isometric style games. You got Lock and Chase, which is like a Pac-Man style game. Sly Spy, uh, an action adventure, and Tumble Pop, that single screen um, sort of style game. But there are some good games on this, there's no doubt about it. Um, there's a few games that probably aren't quite great, like Burger Time, for example, but some good stuff would be Bad Dudes versus Dragon Ninja. It is great stuff on here. Now, I've got scan lines on it, so maybe make it look a little bit darker than it actually is. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic beat em up. The emulation is superb on this game, um, and it's great fun to play on the alpha. It really is good. Now, there are some things that probably don't work quite as well. Now, Breakthrough was actually quite good. Um, it's a tricky game, but I actually felt myself getting uh, a lot further than I did on the EXP, for example. It did play a lot better on the joystick, um, and it didn't feel quite as tough. Um, famous last words, probably. But yeah, it does, it does feel so much better on the joystick. Ah, sorry, lots of button bashing. Now, stuff that doesn't work too well would be Burger Time, uh, unfortunately. I just felt it doesn't sound that great. The emulation seems a bit, I don't know, the sound just seems a little bit off to me. And you still have that sticky ladder syndrome that causes a little bit of frustration when you're playing the game. And for me, the sound is pretty awful. And yeah, I've got, I've got stuck with the character right away there. For me, you want to avoid this one. Also, Darwin 4078 is a brutally tough um, sort of shoot 'em up, which I really don't enjoy. Stuff like Lock and Chase plays a lot better on uh, here. Slice by plays okay, but personally, I actually preferred playing that on the XP with the uh, sort of D-pad. But stuff that works really well would be Wizard Fire uh, series Dark Seal 2. Excellent stuff. It just feels like it comes into its own when you're playing it on this joystick or on the Alpha. Now you can play this one as two player gate if you like. I think it has three player options on it, but unfortunately on the alpha you are stuck to two players. And graphically and sound, it's fantastic stuff. Now there's a slight difference between this version and the first game, whereas the first game it's like uh, the character only has like four way movement, but in the, the sequel it has eight way movement, so it does work a lot better on the alpha with the eight way joystick that we have here.
Now what's not to love with this game? It's fantastic fun. Oh, shit, the wrong way. <laughs> anyway, what a great game. So guys, I would say overall, yes, this would be one of the best collections to buy for your Alpha. Most of the games are really good fun. Um, there was only maybe a few games that I probably didn't quite like, uh, such as Darwin 478 and Burger Time probably didn't feel that great on here. But the rest of the games are really good. Chain Reaction's a puzzle style game. Probably not really the, the sort of type of game to play on a, an arcade machine, but it still is pretty good fun. Uh, and Tumble Pops, the, the single screen stuff as well, which is really good fun. I probably should show that as well. It is great stuff uh, on here. I would definitely recommend Data East Arcade 1. It is great stuff. Now, there's certainly plenty of single screen games on the arcade collections, there's no doubt about it, and we will cover them all um, when we're in this video. Okay guys, next up is Gaioko Arcade 1. This comes complete with six games, and this was definitely one of my most favourite arcade collections on the EXP and the VS when it was released. Um, but does it work well on the Alpha? Let's find out. You've got six games, Alligator Hunt, Biomechanical Toy, Glass, World Rally, Thunderhoop and Snowboard Championship. So let's have a look at the good stuff, which is more or less all of it. Although, there is one game that I didn't really quite get as much enjoyment out of, and I'll explain that uh, in a second or two. But let's start off with the absolutely amazing Alligator Hunt. This one sounds fantastic, plays fantastic. It is an absolute blast to uh, play. Um, but probably, I think, in this occasion, I slightly prefer playing it on the handheld or the VS. I just feel it's probably a little bit more accurate on the D-pad. The, the I felt like the joystick um, doesn't feel quite the same. But still, it is a blast. It is an amazingly good fun arcade game. And it sounds and looks absolutely fantastic stuff. Now also on here we've got crazy platforming style biomechanical toy um, which is really good fun. Um, pretty hard though but it is really decent. One of those quirky titles that you, you wonder where the heck did this come from. Um, obviously if you grew up maybe uh, in Spain you'll definitely recognise some of these games. Uh, Galco being a Spanish company. Um, but for me this was my first experience of pretty much all of these games. absolute blast and I have to say it does work uh, really well on the joystick. It's a bit weird playing these games now how they're meant to be played um, even though I probably experienced them for the first time using a d-pad so it is a little bit weird. Maybe that clouds my judgement slightly because this is obviously how it was meant to be played in the first place. But yeah this is great fun no doubt about it absolutely fantastic stuff. There's also Glass, which is a kind of a clear the screen puzzle tell style game. It's okay, it's not really the best on the Alpha. Snowboard Championship, a lot of fun, does work really well. Um, now Thunderhoot for me, I'm not really sure. I just don't think it, it handles that great with the joystick. It just doesn't feel right for me, um, which was a little bit disappointing. Um, I think it requires for intricate movement and I felt that sometimes um, the character got stuck, especially when I'm trying to manoeuvre on the ladders. Now this game is very very tough, there's so many things that can probably uh, destroy you but it does handle okay, I just at times I got a little bit frustrated because I got stuck trying to negotiate ladders, um, which, yeah obviously you'll die quite a lot and go back to the start which is frustrating. Sometimes trying to negotiate those ladders was a little bit tricky and I think later on when you're obviously it requires for a little bit more intricate movement um, you'll probably get a little bit stuck and lose a lot more lives than you probably would if you're playing it on like the EXP for example. But overall it is a classic game, it does look and sound amazingly well but I can't help thinking it just was a little bit more fun, a little bit more accurate with a d-pad. And there's those glorious bad guys. Trying to avoid some of these things, impossible. 
And obviously there is the glorious World Rally which handles amazingly well with this joystick I have to say. Probably even better than it does on a D-pad. Now I absolutely love this game, I think it's fantastic. We need more of these games on Evercade. And this is probably the best example of this type. On Evercade does. Hold B to accelerate, use the joystick to negotiate round the bends. You can think about pressing A to break, but yeah, probably not. This definitely pleasantly surprised me how well it controls with this joystick. I was probably a little bit sceptical at first, but it seems very natural. Uh, and yeah, it does feel good. Very accurate. Very responsive. Great stuff. Still uh, capable of sort of competing and putting in some decent times without crashing too much. I said too much. And that's not too bad. So guys, that's Gatelco Arcade 1. Definitely recommend it. Most of the games are really good on here. I, I probably felt Thunderhook was the weakest, given the fact that the controls were a little bit sticky at times. But overall, it's a great collection. I would definitely recommend this for your alpha. Okay guys, next up we got Atari Arcade 1. This comes complete with 13 games. It's collection number 4. Um, and we've got some of the Atari classics on here, though I don't really think the, the emulation is that great. It has improved since the uh, cart was first released. We've got Asteroids Deluxe, Canyon Bomber, we've got Centipede, we've got Crystal Castles, Liberator, Lunar Lander, Millipede, Missile Command, Night Driver, Super Breakout, Skydiver, Pong and Warlord. Now I'll probably have to get the bad stuff out of the way first. We'll go with the classic Pong. Uh, and emulation wise it's not good, there really is something not right with this at all and it's completely unplayable, it's way, running way too quickly, it's far too difficult to actually get anywhere with, I think it's one of those games that it really does need work, um, but it is what it is, I'm not really sure it's a game that many people are really going to want to play these days, but if the emulation was better maybe it would be a lot more fun as it stands, no thank you. Now also in the same sort of guys we'd have to put Super Breakout as well um, because it just doesn't feel right. This really does need a paddle or a tracker ball to actually play properly. The movement with um, the joystick is not accurate enough um, to be even remotely playable. Um, meaning you're never going to be able to bat that ball back up and break the, the blocks at the top here. It's just completely pointless. Which is a shame because I remember having this on the Atari 2600 and playing it on the paddles and I absolutely loved it, but with a joystick it just doesn't work at all. There are some nice enough games, this is really more like for a 4 player game, it's okay but doesn't feel great on the, the joystick either. Skydiver is okay for a few minutes. Now interestingly enough, Night Driver I actually quite enjoyed playing. Now a lot of the buttons are to do with the gears. Um, but it, it, it actually seemed to work really well um, on the joystick and I actually had a lot of fun. It is a little bit mesmerising though and a bit hypnotic when you're playing it. But I actually quite enjoyed it, I don't know why. <laughs> it certainly seems to uh, handle a lot better on the joystick than a lot of the games on this collection. And um, that's for sure. Now stuff that does work well, Missile Command is fantastic on here. Not a huge fan of this type of game, but I can clearly see that this works really, really well. And it does sound excellent too. Now, admittedly, this is one that probably used a tracker ball as well in the arcades. But with the joystick, it does work really well. Um, obviously other games on this collection like Super Breakout and Pong need that tracker ball as well but this game still works really well with the joystick. Now other stuff get me Millipede and Centipede, they're absolutely fine. Obviously they are uh, vertical aspect ratio games. Crystal pa Castle works okay, probably a little bit oversensitive on the joystick but it's okay. Liberator is fine, um, Asteroids Deluxe is what it is, as Asteroids. Um, not quite deluxe, we have got that deluxe background but the actual game just isn't quite um, Asteroids Deluxe but still, it's alright. If you like Asteroids you'll probably quite enjoy playing this. Now 
Now one game that's quite good fun to play is actually Lunar Lander, it is very relaxing. It does sound a bit crazy, I know it's, it's a very straightforward game, you're trying to land uh, as best you can on one of these spots here. Um, obviously you try and land on this spot, you can get five times your score uh, type thing. And it's, it's definitely one of those games that require a lot of intricate movement and it does work um, really well on uh, the joystick. Whether I can land it or not, probably not. Yeah, it's one of those games that requires a lot of patience to get right. You just need to keep a, an eye on your speed that's going down here and try and control it with the B button uh, and try and land it as best as you can on one of these flat spots. I'll probably going to crash. Yep, yeah, I'm going to crash. Oh, I actually made it. Wow. This game is actually a lot of fun. Okay guys, so overall, I would probably just about recommend Atari Arcade. There's a few games that don't emulate well, don't control well, but you still got those classics that are good fun. Some somewhere, somewhere on the fence. It really does depend how much you like your classic Asteroids, Centipede, Crystal Castles and some of the other games. If you're not into the Atari stuff, then you might want to avoid this one. Me, I'm somewhere on the middle. I like some of them, don't enjoy some of the other ones. The emulation on some of these games are not great still. Okay, moving on to collection number five. This is Jalico Arcade One. And I'll happily say this, this is definitely my uh, top pick, top arcade collection currently available on Evercade. It's fantastic. Eight games, eight excellent games. Uh, and I couldn't really find anything wrong with this at all. They're all excellent stuff. You've got 64th Street, a detective story. You've got Avenging Spirit. You've got Cy Battler, which is a shooter. Uh, and you've got EDF, another shoot em up. P47, another shooter. Rodland. Saint Dragon, Astronax, eight excellent games and I honestly couldn't find a fault with many of them at all or any of them for that matter, I enjoyed all of them, even the shooters and they work fantastically well uh, on the Alpha. Let's have a quick play through at some of them. This one plays and sounds absolutely brilliant. Certainly no final fight, but it's still great. Vengeance Spirit is a kind of quirky platforming game that is really good for and works great. Get Side Battler, which is a fantastic um, sort of shoot 'em up. EDF, Earth Defence Force, P47 uh, as a shooter as well. Let's have a quick bash at e EDF, Earth Defence Force. Now I'm not great at shooters, but I can recognise that this is really good. Just that I'm not very good at playing it, unfortunately. But yeah, you can just insert a coin and carry on. Handles great. Play is great, it's good fun. There's also the classic Rodland, which um, is brilliant. It does play really well, even on the joystick on the Alpha here. Um, I think I've been that used to playing this game on a D pad over the years, but still, it's still great on a joystick. I probably played it for the first time on a joystick, to be honest, on the C64. You don't need to collect the flowers, but if you want to get the extra points, you definitely do. Ah, they just try to run away from you though. Ah, damn. Great fun. Now, Saint Dragon, another fantastic shooter, and Astinax, also a great uh, game. I'm going to have to play both of them, because they are both such great games. Um, and this overall cart is really one of the best on Evercade. It 
it's handling play fantastic. the longest I've went without dying ever playing this game and that must be because I'm playing it on the alpha and then I thought too much and then I died so we might as well also have a look at the Astyanax another fantastic sort of slash them up platform style game it is really good certainly far better than in this version that's on the console cart How good does that sound? It does get a bit repetitive, but it still is excellent fun. So guys, overall, Jalico Arcade 1, fantastic, 8 games, 8 brilliant games, definitely my most favourite arcade cart on Evercade, recommend it, go get it now. Okay guys, next up is Ga Elko Arcade 2, um, this has another 6 games from Ga Elko, um, and interestingly enough, I probably preferred this one uh, on the alpha that is, uh, to the first collection, um, which wasn't the case um, on the EXP or the VS, I definitely prefer the first collection but I actually found myself enjoying this one a lot mo more on the Alpha. We've got six games, Big Karnak which is a sort of platformy slashing game, uh, Maniac Square a puzzle game, we got Squash, does sound crazy it's Squash but wow that's great fun, got a volleyball game, we got World Rally 2 and uh, Thunder Hoop Strikes Back Thunder Hoop 2 um, and Thunder Hoop 2 is definitely a lot more fun to play than Thunder Hoop. Uh, and the emulation on this cart is fantastic. Let's have a quick look at some of them. Big Karnak is okay, it does get a little bit repetitive. Uh, it does play well on the joystick though. We've got Maniac Square, which is a kind of a puzzle game. Uh, I'm not entirely sure you'd be sitting uh, playing this type of game on an arcade machine like this. It feels more at home on like a handheld, for example. Um, but it is here if you want to play it and you like this style of game. And you are basically, it's like columns, you're basically just trying to match up the, the colours uh, and obviously disappear. I think it's three or more that um, you have to clear. You get certain lines that you need to clear uh, in the time limit. Um, and I've just made a complete mess of that, but anyway. Hopefully not triggered anyone out there. That's alright. It has minimal fun. But would you really want to sit and play this on an arcade machine like this? I'm not really sure, to be honest. Oh, I'm running out of time. Now, amazingly, Squash is probably one of my most favourite games on Evercade. There's just something about it that is so much fun. It's very addictive to actually play. Um, and it's, it's really one of those games I just couldn't believe I absolutely love it. It's weird. Now you going to choose, does it matter, Tom Selleck? Let's go for it. Censorship. I think you've really just got two buttons on the joystick. Um, I think one of the buttons is it gives a quick uh, lob or something. I can't really remember. One's are like a quick hit and the other one's uh, just a normal hit. I might be just making that up now. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Uh, and I played this one far too much uh, on the XP, it was so good. Okay, also there's a volleyball game which uh, is okay, it's probably the weakest game on the collection for me. Got uh, Thunderhoop 2 which looks and plays amazingly well. Now I think this game is a little bit more action orientated than the first game, still rock solid hard at times, um, but 
it's it just feels more at home uh, on the Alpha than the, the first game does. I don't know what's wrong with the first game, it just doesn't feel right for me. Um, I, I felt that this game definitely much, much better, much more fun to play. Definitely one of those games you want to show off your Alpha with, that's for sure. Finally, I'll have a look at World Rally 2. It's basically more of the same of World Rally. A little bit trickier. I felt graphically it was a little bit messier, to be honest. It's a bit harder on the eyes, in my opinion. Um, but still, it is pretty much more of the same. It is still addictive stuff. Basically B for Accelerate, that's it. Simple stuff. But I felt the graphic is just a lot bit murkier. Um, it just seems a lot bit messier. Definitely a lot bit harder as well, but it still controls pretty well. I love those crashes. Okay guys, so that's Gatilco RK2, definitely thumbs up for me, one of those cars you have to add to your library if you've got an alpha, it's great stuff, it really is good. Okay guys, next up we've got the classic iRim Arcade one, we've got another six games, um, and it has a few of those classics like R-Type and The Hunt, Moon Patrol, uh, that are excellent stuff, um, so let's have a look at this one, I actually need to put the cart in. So we've got 10 Yard Fight, Battle Chopper, In The Hunt, Lightning Swords, Moon Patrol and R-Type. Now, probably not the best value. I know it's only six games, but I don't think the six games as a whole uh, is that great. There are some great stuff here. Battle Chopper is brutally tough, uh, and I probably still don't enjoy that one. Now, Ten Yard Fight is, is actually pretty decent. I find myself enjoying this one, even though I'm not really a huge American football fan. Does feel and look pretty basic. Now, there's no doubt it is not a John Madden style game at all. And we're away. Sort of. <laughs> Very tough game though. Now we've got the classic In The Hunt. Um, this one is really cool. Made by the same guys that do the, the Metal Slug series. Uh, and it's probably does have that kind of feel when you're playing the game. Now this is definitely another one of those games that you would happily play to show off uh, your alpha with. It really is that type of game. It is cool. Rock solid, you will probably insert so many coins it is just ridiculous, but still, you'll have a lot of fun doing so. It's also Lightning Swords, I might as well play this as well, because this is like a Shinobi style game. And interestingly enough, you don't press the button to jump, you actually press up if you want to jump. Uh, it works really well, it feels quite natural on uh, the joystick. So we've got the classic Moon Patrol, probably one of the older games on the collection, but wow, don't discount it, it has really good fun to play. It has that addictive quality that you'll probably want to keep playing and keep playing until you actually finish it. It's not the longest game in the world. It's got that simplistic sort of look, but it's all about the playability and it has tons of that. Ah. And obviously lastly we got R-Type, who doesn't know R-Type? If you're a big shoot 'em up fan then this might be one of your most favourite games. Um, unlike me though, I find it far too difficult. I just don't have the patience to be able to try and master these type of games. I see how good and how amazing does this look and sound on the Alpha. Ah, 
Okay guys, so that's Irem Arcade 1. I would definitely recommend it. Probably not my most favourite collection, but still I think it is a good, fun collection. Especially if you like your R-Type uh, and Moon Patrol. Lightning Swords is good and the Hunt is fantastic as well. Um, Battle Chopper is okay, it's just far too difficult. But this is a decent collection. Probably not the best value, I guess, out of all the collections, but it's still one that you should definitely think about picking up. Okay guys, next up we've got Tour Plan Arcade 1. We've got 8 games on this, they're a mixture of shooters, uh, there's a couple of uh, sort of different style games. We've got a platform and beat em up style game, we've got the Snow Brothers as well. Um, now if you love your shoot em ups, you probably want to be collecting these Tour Plan collections. But obviously just want to say here, Tour Plan 3 is coming out very soon and that was definitely for me the best one out of all 4 collections that will be released on Evercade. We've got Alcon, Flying Shark, Guardian, uh, Tiger Heli, Techie Packy, Snow Brothers, Truxton and Zero Wing. I really enjoy some of these games. Truxton and Zero, One are, uh, Zero Wing are probably the ve best games here. Alcon, Flying Shark, I feel sometimes some of these games feel pretty much the same. Although if you're a shoot 'em up fan, it won't matter to you. You will absolutely love them. And I'm just going to play through a couple of them because a lot of them do feel very similar. Now a lot of these shooters are vertically aspect ratio, meaning obviously you've got massive borders left and right here. They are meant for the tatty mode. They are actually ideal for um, the EXP and tatty mode, but if you don't mind those borders, then you'll probably still enjoy these anyway. And I have to say, it does feel really nice uh, on the joystick. It handles really well, very responsive. Doesn't necessarily make me a better player, but I can see it does feel very nice with the joystick. It feels a lot more natural than it does playing uh, on a D-pad. The fact that I'm still alive says it all really, doesn't it? Probably fluke. <laughs> Maybe I should stop playing now. I've got Guardian, which is a sort of scrolling, um, sort of a beat em up, which really is not good. It's absolutely terrible. But um, I've got Snow Brothers, which is a single screen game. A lot of people, I'm sure, must have heard of Snow Brothers. You can play this two player game if you want to insert a, um, another joypad. And don't play it like I do. Don't play it like I do. Now you've also got Teki Paki, that's another game that's a puzzle style game. It's a little bit like Columns, but a little bit different. It's not bad, but for me, I don't really feel at home playing those style of games uh, on an arcade machine. It just doesn't feel right. You've got Tiger Heli, another sort of shoot em up, but the best two probably on this collection are Truxton and Zero Wing. We'll have a quick bash at them. Um, I say Truxton is probably the harder of the two. And this one does have the turbo fire um, activated. Now hopefully this will be activated for all the arcade games by the time the alpha does actually launch. Because it does make a huge difference. So you're not like constantly uh, bashing away at the button. You can just hold the button down and concentrate in, in moving the uh, ship to take out the enemies. Because these games are hard enough without constantly have to fire. But if you prefer playing your games that way then that's absolutely fine. Not a problem at all. But these are still very tough games. Finally we've got Zero Wing. Now I think this is probably my most favourite game on this collection and um, probably because you can insert a coin and just pretty much continue from where you left off till you finish the game. So even though it is tough it's still doable and it doesn't really matter what your skill is. Okay, overall guys, I would probably just about recommend this collection. I think Tour Plan Arcade 3 is the one. If you're only going to buy one, that would be it. Obviously it's not out yet, but this one is okay. If you love your shooters, you will love it. If you don't like shooters, you might want to think twice about it. Okay guys, we're on to Tour Plan Arcade 2. We've got seven more games from the Tour Plan library. 
Um, and basically we've got more shooters, we've got a little bit more variety, we've got a few more games there that are a little bit different. Uh, we've got a bike game, we've got Wardner, we've got um, Demon's World as well, which is a, a platformy style game. Uh, another few shooters, Fire Shark, Hellfire, Twin Hawk, Twin Cobra. Personally, I think a lot of them, those games do feel very similar. Got Rally Bike and Wardner. So I'm not going to play all the shooters. For me, they do feel very similar. Um, so I'm only going to play a couple of them. Got Demon's World, which is a platformer. Um, and it, it's actually okay. I'm not really sure it's that great uh, on the joystick, to be honest. I find I found definitely found it difficult um, trying to utilise the double jump function. So yeah, as I said, the, the double jump function, you need to press the, the jump button twice, but very, very quickly. If you don't press it at the right time, it doesn't actually work. That's just how the game works. I've experienced that quite a lot on the other platforms. Um, it feels like a problem within the game, but that's basically, you just have to time it right when you're trying to do that double jump. We've also got Rally Bike. Um, and this one's alright, it feels probably a little bit more natural on the joystick than it does on the D-pad. Mm. Has a nice little tune to it, no doubt. I really wish I could get some firepower to take out some of these bikes though. Oh, don't need turbo. Oh, it's so hard. Jeez, that is very difficult. I'm only going to play a couple of these uh, shooters. I'll probably try Twin Hawk. That's probably my favourite one of the, the four. I personally felt they're just too similar for me. Who doesn't love this intro? Definitely my favourite out of the bunch here. Okay, so lastly guys, have another look at Wardner. This one, it's alright. It plays pretty well with the, the joystick, but obviously some of the sound here and there can be a bit mm, scary. Especially at the start. Keep the sound down low when you're playing this part, it really is awful. This one definitely brings a little bit more variety to the cart if it's not a shooter. I know there's a lot of people who love this game out there, which is fair enough. I think it's alright, it's not bad. And it, it does seem to handle pretty well with the joystick. I'm, I'm sort of negotiating the, the platforms quite easily. does feel more uh, natural to play with the joystick for sure rather than the d-pad probably a little bit simpler okay guys so that's two a plant arcade two pretty much like the first one i would probably only recommend it if you do like those shooters otherwise there's probably not an awful lot here to warrant a purchase if you like your shoot ups you will love more of this but personally i think if you were only going to choose one i would hold off for two a plant arcade three that's coming out at the end of november Okay guys, the last cart uh, of the current bunch, this is cart number 10, uh, this is Pico Arcade 1, it comes complete with 9 games. Now Pico have acquired a lot of these licenses uh, for these games, a lot of them are from the Unico brand, I think they were a Korean uh, sort of based company, but there's a few other games that are not from that uh, sort of brand. Anyway, we're going to have a look at some of the games, we've got the Crazy Burglar X, we've got Diver Boy, Dragon Master, I beat him up, we've got Fancy World, Earth of Crisis, Magic Purple, both single screen style games, Master Fury, another beat em up, Steel Force, a great sort of action styled alien breed like game, Legend of Silk Road, which is a beat em up, and Ultimate Tennis. A really weird but nice mix of games, and I actually thoroughly enjoy this collection. Uh, I know a lot of people probably don't see the first, but I think it's fantastic. It's definitely a lot different from other arcade carts that we've got there, uh, and I would definitely recommend it. So let me pick through some of the games that are on here. 
uh, starting with the absolutely weird, bonkers Burglar X. Probably one of the only few arcade games with an actual fart button. Yeah, I said fart. Just in case you were wondering. Press the B button to fart. So just in case you wonder if it's me that's farting, it's definitely not, it's in the game. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so yeah, some kind of strange fart number. So you're trying to headbutt the, the dice to get enough coins uh, to move on to the next stage. You see you've got 30, 28 coins to collect. Um, obviously you want to try and headbutt it when it's at the highest possible number. None of this makes any sense. You can fart on the cops to put them off your sight. Uh, off your scent, I guess. Uh, but yeah, bonkers stuff. None of this makes any sense whatsoever. But it is a lot of fun to actually play. We've got Diver Boy, which is a single screen uh, still game. That is very good. We've got Dragon, Dragon Master and Master Fury. Kind of similar games. Very, very tough. I'm only going to play one of them. They are fighting, one on one fighting games. Um, it does feel better on the joystick than it does on the D-pad. I felt I, I got a little bit further than I did uh, on the EXP, but it's still really tough. It's one of those games you're going to have to put the time in if you want to master it. It's not called Dragon Master for nothing, is it? Spam the buttons, hope for the best. <laughs> now, I have to say, it does feel much, much better on the joystick than it does playing on the D-pad, but uh, beware, these fighting games on this collection are really, really, really tough. I feel as if the computer is 100% cheating. Ah! Good luck trying to uh, defeat any of these characters. Oh! Boulder Dash. So, Fancy World and Magic Park are pretty similar. I think if I recall Fancy World is the better of the two. They feel kind of the same. It's a single screen uh, sort of platforming style game. Clear the uh, platform of all the enemies. Don't try to understand what's going on. Just enjoy it for what it is. A lot of these games do feel pretty similar. Pretty good fun to play. Okay, we've also got Steel Force, Silk Road, and Ultimate Ma Ultimate Tennis. These are all three excellent games. I might as well play them. This is an absolute blast. Very much a little bit like a Alien Breed style game, but obviously it's more arcadey. It's a no-brainer. Just hold down the button, make it through the level, take out the the enemies at the end. It's a blast. Personally, I think it, it feels to me like it probably handles better on a D-pad. I'm not really sure why, it just doesn't seem to have the same level of control that it does. But it, it feels like it was more designed for a D-pad than the joystick. I'm not saying it's bad, it just feels better uh, for me on a D-pad. And we've also got Silk Legend of Silk Road, which can be played as a two-player game. It's a scroll and beat em up. I think it's really, really good. You can choose from three characters, you've got lots of special moves as well. Um, graphically looks nice, plays pretty nice. It's good fun. It's definitely a button basher, there's no doubt about it. You've got your special moves. There's actually quite a good variety of them as well. And lastly, we've also got Ultimate Tennis. Um, very basic tennis game, but um, arguably, arguably it probably is the best tennis game we have on Evercade. Not, probably not saying much, but it is good fun. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky to figure out where the, the ball is going to be when it, uh, to hit it, but it's still great fun. It's definitely another one of those games that might not feel quite as good on the D-pad than it does on the e or on the joystick than it does on a D-pad. Because you're really only moving left to right and a little bit up and down, so it, you can get away with playing this one on a D-pad, no problem. Okay guys, so that's our look at the last collection. This is Pico Arcade 1. Definitely recommend it. It's got a great selection of games, lots of different variety. Some toughies in there, but... 
100% recommend it. You should definitely seek it out and get it for your Alpha. Okay guys, so that is the last of the arcade collections. Now there are a few up and coming. We've got Data East Arcade 2 and Tour Plan Arcade 3 coming very soon. Data East Arcade 2 is pretty cool. Um, it's got, how many games we've got? We've got 12 games. Not really sure it's the best to be honest. It's got a nice variety of games, but probably my least favourite um, sort of cart. Uh, arcade cart that's been released so far but we will give it a go when it gets released at the end of this month we also have tour plan arcade 3 and um, this one is definitely the best tour plan collection that we'll have on our arcade got the classic batsagon the special uh, version fixate gox we got outzone we got truxton 2 we got vimana uh, and that's it. Basically they're all shooters, so if you don't like your shooters you're absolutely going to hate it. But I'm not a big fan of shooters and I think this cart is fantastic and I would recommend it when it does get released. But we will cover it uh, when we get our official copy from uh, Funstock. Okay guys, obviously to summarise, there are some great arcade collections. Some of them work better than others on the Alpha. Um, no doubt about it, I would certainly recommend Jalico Arcade 1. Um, Gaelco Arcade 2 was good as well, but if you're only going to pick a couple of them, I would probably choose between Pico Arcade, Jalico Arcade 1, uh, and maybe the Agal Kill Carts. That East is pretty good as well. Not sure they're all worth buying, however, if you're obviously like uh, everyone else that gets into Evercade, you probably want to collect them all. Anyway, guys, I hope that helps you. Let me know what carts you are going to pick up for your Alpha. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.